this grant uh, was important for me in the sense of uh, it was a starter, a starter grant. That is, it was of the size and um, at the time when I really needed the funding. Um, so oftentimes in science, you know, you have some good ideas initially, but it's very difficult to get funding because you need those preliminary results. Mm -hmm. And I think the real impact that the Blasker grant made in my career was giving me the funding um, and allowing me to get those preliminary results that I could then sort of uh, follow through and get larger funding uh, for that. And, and so, so in a sense, it, it allowed me to grow my research program in many different directions than uh, I had originally anticipated. And I think that was a real impact on, on my early career. I received the Blasker Award, um, and that really propelled my research program. So that was uh, obviously before tenure. Mm -hmm. And soon after that, I think in the following year, I applied for a very large NSF award that's only given to pre-tenure faculty. Mm -hmm. So the award is called the NSF Career Award. Um, and it's a five-year award. It's one of NSF's most prestigious awards in the sense of it marries both teaching and research in a sort of creative way. You, you need to demonstrate that you can not only do top quality research, but also think about how that research can then funnel into the, the, the teaching or research component. Mm -hmm. And so um, I took the results that I got from the Blasker grant and uh, put them into my NSF proposal. And um, fortunately, that proposal was funded. So I'm actually in year four of that award. Oh, wow. And uh, I attribute a lot of success in getting that award to the Blasker Grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the project that I proposed to the San Diego Foundation and was funded was really a project that um, involves the conversion of a natural biomaterial to a, uh, um, a plastic-like material. That is, what we're trying to do is take a material that's uh, found in all trees um, and some grasses and uh, take that material and convert it into a sort of renewable uh, plastic, okay? That is to say, this material is called lignin. Um, it's a biopolymer, second most bio, abundant biopolymer in the world. And uh, it's, ex it's actually a waste product of two industries. One is the paper and pulp industry, and the second is the uh, biorefinery industry. So when we think about this idea of converting biomass into, let's say, ethanol for fuels, uh, in that process, a significant byproduct is this polymer that's called lignin. And currently, no one really knows what to do with this material. It's, it's a brown powder. Um, it's produced in very large quantities when we convert you know, cellulose to ethanol. And one of the goals is really to figure out, you know, can we take this material and make it of something of higher value? Mm -hmm. And if we can do that, then that will sort of feed back into the economic cycle of the cellulosic ethanol and reduce the cost of the cellulosic ethanol. Currently, what they're doing with this byproduct is simply burning it. Mm -hmm. And so they generate steam that goes into the plant, and it's a cost recovery cycle, but that cycle is really not efficient. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is take this byproduct, funnel it off, and take that material and convert it into a functional material, maybe a plastic. Mm -hmm. That plastic may have application, plastic-like material, but that, that material may have applications in packaging, it may have applications in uh, you know, all, all kinds of different industries. So what I proposed to the Blasker uh, program was that we really, at that point in the, in the research program, we really needed some equipment, instrumentation, and also uh, know-how to be able to uh, do this project. So what I proposed is an initiative to start this campaign working with this material and also to purchase an instrument that will allow us to characterize um, the physical properties of the, the, the materials that we would make. Mm -hmm. And so that worked out well. We bought the instrument uh, with funding from the Blasker program. We supported undergraduate students. We advanced the research to a point where we had preliminary results to make this uh, you know, naturally occurring material into a functional material. Mm -hmm. And we pitched that to NSF and NSF funded that work. And, and, and we're still ongoing with that research project. Um, and I think you'll get to this later, but out of that work has come many publications. Mm -hmm. um, at least on that project, uh, two and one is in the sort of hopper. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think it's been a really good project for undergraduates, especially considering the emphasis nowadays on green chemistry mm -hmm. and on chemistry that's sustainable, where we can take materials from natural sources and convert them into functional materials. Yeah. Um, I don't have an exact number. Uh, the funding, the most of the funding from the award actually went to the instrumentation. 
Um, but you know, secondarily, I think there was a lot of impacts on students in terms of being able to support that research program. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they were directly funded by the Blasker mm -hmm. program, but uh, you know, on the order um, of probably 10, uh, 10 undergraduate students that have gone on. Some of those now are in graduate student or graduate school. Uh, there's one at UC Berkeley. Uh, one student is at Johns Hopkins. Um, and several others uh, around uh, MD or yeah MD PhD program at Boulder, uh, Colorado, and um, other students have gone on to work in local biotech industry um, here in town. Um, so that's kind of the outcomes that we want. We want students to be trained, be able to do research, be able to think like researchers, and either go on to graduate school or move into industry. Yeah, it's difficult to say, you know, because I think one thing with research is you're always taking a nonlinear path to the to the end game, mm -hmm. right? So from year to year, you don't necessarily know where the projects will take you or sort of the route that you'll take to get to the, the final product. Um, but I can say that I think the funding from the Blasker program was really catalytic in the sense that it catalyzed a lot of things and opened up a lot of opportunities for me as a junior faculty member uh, to get that federal funding. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so for Blasker, actually, that instrumentation, um, you know, has been used by other research groups um, in the area. In addition, uh, we've sort of started a collaboration, although it's just in the early stages, with John Cadla, who's at the University of British Columbia. Okay. Um, and he looks at the same kind of biopolymer that we're interested in. He's sort of an expert on this material. Mm -hmm. And so we've started some relationship with him. Mm -hmm. um, and we recently just published a paper with a group at the University of South Carolina mm -hmm. um, that also does research in the lignin area. Mm -hmm. so. What I'd really want is to see students from my group who are undergraduates, those groups are primarily PhD granting institutions. So I really want to see my students go there and mm -hmm. interact with their scientists. That's, mm -hmm. That would be something I think that would be interesting from uh, you know, a funding point of view is to, to enable that sort of interface. Mm -hmm. But there's also the possibility to promote collaboration between non blasker grant recipients. For example, someone at USD collaborating with someone at uh, UCSD, mm -hmm. or Scripps Research Institute collaborating with USD. Um, you know, or whatever the two, the pairing is, but provide incentives for people to collaborate um, in San Diego and really support those people uh, in their collaboration. Uh, yeah, so as a direct result on this project dealing with this uh, natural biopolymer mm -hmm. that we work with, uh, mm -hmm. currently I think we've published three papers in that area. Wow. Um, so, and in addition, I think the secondary impact has been the instrumentation that we acquired on the grant has allowed us to expand our expertise in that direction. That is, we, we've kind of gone from, here's our focus, now we've expanded laterally, and it's allowed us to publish papers broadly defined in polymer chemistry. So the instrumentation actually is a way for us to measure physical properties of polymers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and before that, we were really, at USD, did have very little instrumentation that allowed us to do that. Yeah. Um, and I would say another really strong impact from, from this award is the instrumentation that we purchased using the Blasco program not only impacted my research program, but you know when I think about it now, it really impacted a lot of students at USD going through the curriculum mm -hmm. because we use that instrumentation in our undergraduate curriculum when we teach classes. So it serves two purposes. It's a research instrumentation and it's uh, capable of doing very top-notch research. But we also use it in our upper division uh, laboratory classes where undergraduates get trained. And I would say before this grant actually, or before my group started doing more polymer chemistry, that was a huge gaping hole in our curriculum. No one, and you know, if you think about the world of chemistry, uh, polymers are a huge component of that world, but yet it's very, it's not taught at the undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. So since then, we've acquired that instrumentation through the Blasco program, and then we've been able to acquire two or three other instruments, and we have some expertise now in polymer chemistry that really impacts then, you know, hundreds of students, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, students who are going to go on to graduate school to local industry, and I, th I think that's been really powerful. Mm -hmm.